Dear friends, welcome to Spacefaring Civilization. I'm Masood. This video is an interview with Marko Matojevic, who is a 3D animator and filmmaker, also a SFC member. We meant to go live with Marko's interview on Saturday, but unfortunately with what's happening with the coronavirus and everything, we decided to have a Zoom conference. And my colleague John Kelly will be interviewing Marco. So I hope you enjoy this. Hi, everybody. Welcome again to SFC Live. We're, well, we're not actually live, though. We're recording, but I know you're going to pick this up and I uh, hope you are safe and well wherever you are. And of course, this is the place where us filmmakers help each other to create optimistic sci fi and inspire a better future. So I know you're all into that, and uh, a better future is something we all aspire to right now, I'm sure. All right, so I'm John Kelly, if you remember me before, uh, and uh, of course, Masood is in the background doing his magic, uh, looking after things um, on the technical side. So thanks again, Masood, for that. And of course, there's another episode where we get a chance to talk to someone who can provide us some great insights on how to um, use some new skills to uh, create our optimistic sci fi. Uh, and tonight, we have the pleasure of having Marco Matosevic. I had to check that out. Matosevic. <laughs> yes, I think I got it right, Marco. You did. Um, <laughs> it took a little bit of practice. But uh, Marco is a 3D animator. So this is a, a, a nice uh, spin from what other areas we've worked on. Uh, he's also the winner of the best animation at the recent Lights Canberra Action 2020 for his film Terraformer. So a very recent winner of that, which is great. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, is an avid YouTuber with tutorials on 3D animation, and you'll see a link to that uh, on the screen at some point as well. I know that uh, Masood will drop that on there, but check that out, particularly if you're into uh, animation. I'm sure you get some great tips on that, but uh, broadly as well, you'll get some just some good insights to what happens in the uh, in the other parts of our creative world that you might not be involved in. If you're not involved in animation, you can probably learn a lot anyway. So I think it'd be great. All right, so uh, that's a bit about Marco. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions now, Mark. So you uh, you had a uh, great experience with Terraform, great success, obviously, getting that, that award. So well done and congratulations on that. Thank you. But uh, what do you think were the biggest challenges in producing that? And at the end of the day, what was the, uh, the greatest joy you got from it as well? So we'll start off with the greatest joy. Yeah. Finishing it. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, so as well because I'm trying to build up the YouTube uh, channel following as well. I pretty much live stream the whole process um, over the nine days of creating the animated short film. Wow. Um, so that was all predominantly everything except for the last scene we, I didn't do. The good, the um, bad and the ugly. Yeah. Yes. Well, I didn't want to, I didn't want to kind of give away the ending as well. Right. Okay. Um, but it was more, I didn't test the technologies um, before the uh, starting the film, so I kind of got a lot of the facial motion capture and the import um, and the character created just before the start of it. Um, but I didn't, yeah, test those technologies, which mm. kind of uh, backfired me a little bit. Right. So um, I've created a whole breakdown of that video uh, of the film about all the issues that I had. Um, for instance, kind of I had to merge two of the bones inside a character. Right but I made a mistake where I deleted some bones. And so if you watch the first, if you watch the film in the first scene, his jaw actually doesn't move. It's just his lips. <laughs> um, another really big challenge was it took me 120 hours to render. Wow. And when you've only got 10 days to make a short film, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so that was a big learning thing. Is yeah, there wasn't a, was a lot of sleep over that 10 days, I'd imagine then, Marco. Well, you have to remember, I'm still working full time. Yeah, of course. Doing that, uh, wife, kids, YouTube channel, you know, I still got to keep all that up. And yeah, it was that, you know, yeah, there was a little bit of lack of sleep and I'm still recovering, but you know, you just got to keep going. Um, so that was the big thing. Um, one thing this year that I did though, is I actually handed off the sound effects to somebody else. I um, handed it off to Ryan from ImageFlex. Right. So he's got a YouTube channel as well. And the sounds that he produced were amazing. And he's done a video on that, on the breakdown of how he um, engineered some of those sounds as well. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah. So, yeah, go for Yeah, that. look, so, that, uh, so all that would also would be very useful for people who are 
starting out their own journey um, in animation and uh, certainly learn from the mistakes, all the lessons, all the uh, the challenges that you had. So that'd be that'd be great. So highly recommend that you not only just um, look for the um, way things were done well, but where the challenges were, so you can maybe avoid those too, huh? Yeah. All righty. So uh, that was your joy was finishing it, your challenges you've gone through. That's fantastic. <laughs> so overall, how did you find um, the LC? Was that your first LCA uh, entry or? That was actually my eighth LCA eighth, right. entry. So I've yeah. been doing it for quite a few years. Yep. Um, for the past, I think, four or five years, I've been focusing on animation because right. I figure there's not that many crazy people who want to try and do an animation in 10 days. Yeah. Um, so my competition is a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year's Twice. this year's LCA was unbelievable. Every yeah. film that was in the top twelve deserved to be in the top twelve. Mm -hmm. They it just there were some unbelievable performances. There was unbelievable stories. It was it was a tough competition, and I think next year is going to be even harder. Yeah, look, it gets better and better every year. Yeah. I, I've seen it a couple of years myself now, but uh, I think it's uh, certainly going to be um, a good challenge for uh, other interstate competitions as well to, to know what our little territory uh, gets up to. Yeah, yeah, because we're getting uh, yeah we're getting better and better. All right, so let's talk about now what the uh, the um, obviously the main theme of our our blog here is the uh, optimistic sci-fi genre. So, how can three D animators tell an optimistic sci-fi story. What what would be sort of your take on how they should start working towards something in that sort of genre? If you're going 3D route, the possibilities open up dramatically. You are not restricted by location because you can just make it. I mean, you look at The Mandalorian. That's um, if you watch the making of that, that's a giant projector in the background. Nobody knew, but the scenery opens up, the locations open up, characters open up, yeah. um, the themes open up. It's the opportunities are endless with 3D. Mm. You don't have any limitations. The only limitations you might have are your skills. Yeah. But with practice, you get better and better. Yeah. It took me eight years, but I got there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so on your tutorials, Marco, you would, uh, you would offer some advice on, on sort of uh, program software and uh, things that I can use, tools that will help that sort of stuff? Yeah. So normally every Monday I do tutorials on the Reillusion suite, which is right. kind of like the character creator, the motion capture. Um, and there's some other cool tools that are coming out soon. Tuesdays I normally do Blender add-ons. So um, either paid or free that they can actually put into the Blender pro uh, program, which is a 3D modeling, animating, whole bunch of stuff you can do in there. Yeah. Wednesdays, I normally do a live stream. Thursdays is a tutorial. Fridays is kind of like a recap. Saturday, I have a break. And then Sunday night's another live stream as well. So, wow. So yeah. your family must love you, mate. I whenever, do it all when they're they asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's great. Look, thanks for sharing that. So I suppose um, because we are talking about optimistic sci-fi as we are, has there been any uh, series or episodes or anything in the optimistic sci-fi genre that's influenced you in the in terms of your 3D animation? Oh, in terms of 3D animation. Or I even just what, the fact of your storytelling. What, um, what has sort of influenced you there? I think there was an open source film that the Blender guys made called Tears of Steel mm -hmm. that showed the possibilities of what you could achieve in 3D. Right. You know, coming in from live action into 3D, that opened my eyes. Um, what really got me going and got me excited about things was Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Right. The one There's a specific scene where the pods are racing through the canyon yep, yep. and just the lighting, um, you know, that it just opened my eyes. Like yeah. I could not believe it. And that came out in 2001, I think. Mm. So I've been, you know, I just love the sci-fi genre and the possibilities that it just brings. So a couple of decades later, that's uh, even um, sort of a bit humble now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and once again, I think The Mandalorian's been the most recent thing where I've sat down and, you know, just haven't been able to stop, you know, just watched yeah. it all in one day because... I and you watch it from a technical point of view or, or certainly as a, from an entertainment point of view, but certainly you must sit there and 
and uh, not pick at it, but think, wow, I like how they did that or whatever. Well, the problem is, is I didn't know how they did that. I didn't right. understand how they were able to produce so much quality in such little time and to make it almost like feature film style, but still a TV series that, you know, that hadn't been seen before. But then when the making ofs came out, it was, wow, they're using a game engine to create the world. That's, that's unbelievable how far we've come. Yeah. Um, and even when they were talking about, you know, um, you know, one of the rocks didn't look right. Well, we'll just change it live. There wasn't, you know, they didn't have to re-render anything. It was just, you know, we'll just rotate the canyon around. Amazing. <laughs> so, uh, look, the lines are definitely blurred, if not completely dissolved for, between uh, real anima- real life and, and 3D animation, aren't they? It is getting there. Um, I think the uncanny valley, which is kind of like that section between an artificial person and, you know, a real person, that's closing dramatically. Mm. Um, but we're getting there. Mm. Great. All right. So um, I suppose we like to uh, make sure that our, our viewers get an opportunity to uh, pick the brains or get some information from the uh, people we talk to, like yourself yeah. tonight. And obviously your background is in 3D animation. So some top tips for our potential um, uh, 3D animators, if not even they are just our sci-fi, uh, optimistic sci-fi uh, short film uh, entrance that might help them. Do it. Okay. That's 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 the simple first thing. Don't wonder, think, oh, if I had this, but no, just you got to do it. Yeah, stop doubting yourself, man. Eh? Exactly. You know, if you come up with something terrible, you came up with something terrible, but you came up with something, mm. and that's the key feature there. You need to you need to start making things. You can't just sit and wonder, oh, you know, oh, that would be nice. Well, that, no, 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 just do it. And I think that's one good thing that's about really lights, good. camera, action is yep. you got 10 days. You have to get in. You have to do it. Um, that's probably the one big most important tip is just do it. Make something. Tell the story. Don't wait, ponder, wonder. Just get in there and do it. I think that's the biggest tip that I can give to anyone. Even if it's rubbish, just do it. Yeah. We've got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. And look, yeah. I'm sure on those eight entrants you had in LCA, uh, the first one may not have been this to to get you the same level that you had with Terraformer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there was a few other ones that could have been a little bit better, but once again, I was still learning the process, and I think this year I kind of refined it. Right. Um, like last week, I can't remember who you interviewed. Oh, sorry, two weeks ago, um, you guys released a short clip. I can't remember who it was. Yep. That's but fine. he said, start off with that punch. Yeah. You know? And when you, when, or if you've watched uh, Terraformer, you'll see the very first scene is that ship banging into the atmosphere. Yeah. And that was just such a powerful start. Even yeah. I was like, four, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you're right. For a, sh- a short film, um, you want to grab the attention straight away. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, you know, those first five seconds of impression when you meet someone, isn't it? So, yes. <laughs> yeah. So great. Anything else, uh, Marco, that uh, might help uh, our budding um, optimistic sci fi entrance? Oh, no, I'm going to. Related gonna... to animation directly. It's Bob, even just broadly of creating a storyline or whatever it might be. I'm going to, I'm going to stay firm on the whole just do it. Yeah, that's you fine. You learn your capabilities, you learn your restrictions. Um, you learn what you can do and what you can't do, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Mm. And that's the thing is learning from your mistakes. Even if you don't, it would be good if you show it to someone so then they could say, eh. but um, that's, I'm going to stay firm on that one. That no, one. <laughs> Marco, I think you've contributed very well tonight. Thank you so much for sharing your, your thoughts and, uh, and your experience with us tonight. And look, also um, for those people who are looking at entering uh, the, um, the the short film contest, the optimistic short film, sci-fi uh, short films. March deadline is soon approaching, so please jump on board. Uh, we've already talked about doing something in 10 days. We've got less than that right now if you haven't already started. But even if you haven't, you know, certainly get ready. There's still a couple, few more months to go. Every month we, uh, we judge and have a finalist for the uh, end result in August, I believe. So if you're not sure where to find all that information, go to the sfcfilms.com. 
and um, you'll find a lot more about there. But of course, Masood will uh, put on this um, on this recording tonight all the information that you need to find. So, Marco, thanks once again. I hope um, you got some value from it tonight as well. Yep. As I know our viewers certainly did. And it's certainly been my pleasure to uh, be talking to you tonight. So thank you, Marco. Thank you, Masood, again, for all your work in the background. And thank you, viewers, for optimistic sci-fi and all the inspiration you give us and yourselves. So all the best. Thank you very much, guys. See ya.